These children are all having lots of fun, but they're all also building a strong emotional and intellectual foundation. They're learning to read and to write and even do simple mathematics before they go to school. And they're building creativity, memory skills, and values. It's a flying start to their lives. When your baby is born, it has most of the active brain cells it will ever have, billions and billions of them. But, and it's a big but, all that potential intelligence only turns into usable intelligence when those brain cells are connected up, wired up to each other. Let me show you two illustrations that inspired fundamentals. They're based on important work at the University of California. This is what an unstimulated brain looks like. Relatively few brain cell connections, and therefore less usable intelligence, unfulfilled potential. This brain has benefited from a rich, stimulating, and thought-provoking environment, and lots of varied experiences. All those extra lines are new connections between brain cells, and that rich network of pathways is a solid foundation of usable intelligence on which future abilities can flower. But the obvious question for us parents is, how exactly do I create that early rich environment? One that's entirely free of pressure, of course, and yet helps build the skills and values that go up to make a happy, well-adjusted, rounded child. And activities are fun. Each one contributes directly to your child's mental and emotional growth. It's purposeful play, and it makes the most of the time that you spend together. My co-author is Gordon Dryden, a gifted television producer who received a $2 million grant to travel the world, videotaping the world's best learning breakthroughs. The biggest breakthrough of all is what we've learned about the brain and how you can program it to work more effectively. We now know that 50% of one's ability to learn is developed in the first four years of life and another 30% by aged eight. Now that doesn't mean 50% of one's wisdom or 50% of one's intelligence. What it really means is that 50% of your brain's most vital pathways are laid down in the first four years of life. All future knowledge will be based on those vital foundations. What you do in those first few years of life will determine, to a very major extent, your child's entire future. The guiding principle behind fundamentals is to help you help your child to a truly rounded set of abilities. The development of emotional intelligence, for example, social skills, the ability to express feelings, is at least as important as the development of intellectual intelligence for your child's long-term success and happiness. In fact, we've visualized all those abilities as the foundations and building blocks of a pyramid that has as its ultimate objective your child's happiness. The guidebook is just that a reference guide over many years with lots more activities and games, incidentally, and it explains how all the word and the maths games work. Okay, now let's look quite briefly at each of those building blocks. Starting with building up your child's senses. You might think that these children are just doing physical exercises, but an American professor has proved that a daily exercise routine for your child actually improves his or her abilities to read and write. We ordinarily look at children playing or moving or uh, dancing about or being involved in gymnastic activities, and we think of muscle development. The major result of my research is that brain stimulation, that is the increase of sensory activity to the brain, changes the brain cells. And these changes in the brain cells uh, allow for a, an emergence of higher level abilities and skills in children. By abilities, I mean the sensory abilities, such as seeing and hearing. And by skills, I mean the ability to perform schoolwork. The importance of the research is that the brain is plastic, that what we have here is an opportunity with children to make a huge difference by being systematic about the way we supply stimulation. The brain is growing the fastest at that point that it will ever grow again in the child's lifetime. 
and that what we can do is we can boost that growth curve by increasing the amount of stimulation in terms of light, sound, touch, movement, and the contents. Children doing these type of exercises are ending up amongst the highest achievers as they enter school. There are cards which explain how to do these helicopter spins and indeed other brain stimulating exercises at home. Jerome Hartigan is a former Irish Olympic athlete who now runs a series of preschool brain development exercise classes in New Zealand. Developing the physical, the muscular system has a huge impact on developing the brain. So the more that we can nurture the muscles, the senses, the whole body, the more the brain will develop to be able to learn intellectually later on in life. Eye tracking is absolutely key. We take in 80% of our information through the eye. A lot of children go to school with what they call, quote, classic 2020 vision. They may not be able to learn to read and write uh, because they may not have the eye tracking skills. All games develop eye tracking skills. So does dropping feathers develop vertical eye tracking. Other exercises develop all around coordination. You learn through your senses, touch, sight, hearing, so the more acute those senses are, the better your child is equipped to learn. That's why we have activities to develop your child's fine motor skills, which of course lead eventually to the ability to manipulate a pencil and therefore to write. We have activities to deliver their listening ability. Close your eyes and tell me all the sounds you hear. This simple one invites them to stop regularly on a walk and really listen intently and describe everything they hear. And what else? <laughs> Birds. And again. It helps build concentration. <laughs> there are activities to develop a sense of balance. And touch. Oh, rings. Can you walk on hot sand? And bodily awareness. Ooh. What about if I put an ice cube down your back? Building up five acute senses is, of course, one foundation. Another is building up all of your child's intelligences. Yes, I said intelligences. The old simplistic notion that we have a single fixed form of intelligence, which could be measured as an IQ, is, I'm pleased to say, being discredited. Important new work now at Harvard University shows that each child, each one of us in fact, has at least seven different forms of intelligence. Briefly, those intelligences are linguistic intelligence, the ability to read, write, use words well, mathematical logical intelligence, skill use of logic and numbers, bodily physical intelligence, intelligence shown by athletes and dancers, sports people, visual and spatial intelligence, the ability to visualize, draw, paint, navigate, intrapersonal intelligence and inner directed intelligence, the ability to be aware of your own emotions, to control them, to reflect, to make plans, interpersonal intelligence, the ability to communicate well, collaborate and relate sympathetically to others, and finally musical intelligence, the ability to appreciate music and use rhyme. Now, natural differences between children, of course, will mean that some intelligences will be stronger than others. But they can all be encouraged and developed. And this planned development is what we mean by a rounded child. And, of course, that's the aim of fundamentals. Linguistic intelligence, for example, is involved in our next building block, creating a rich vocabulary. Without a rich vocabulary, a child won't be able to express complex ideas. And children who lack a good vocabulary can end up hitting out at the world physically because they get frustrated and they can't express themselves adequately through words. Key, of course, is to talk, talk, talk all the time, simply describing what you're doing as you're doing it. One of the simplest tips is always to extend your child's language base. So if she tells you she sees a dog, Say something like, yes, that's a black and white collie dog with a red collar and a shiny coat. So you're helping her to build both her knowledge and her descriptive powers. There are a lot of activities and games to build vocabulary and a love of words. They include simple games like rhyming words. What should we start with? Um, 
Uh, top. <laughs> Flop. Mop. Pop. Chop. Simply ask a child to name five or even ten things in a category. Five ways of travelling. Five different sorts of transport. What can you think of? Aeroplane. Yeah, well done, one. What else? Lorry. Yes, two. Bus. Three. Train and boat. Yes, well done. Yeah! <laughs> This is a good idea. Discussing where food comes from when you've been shopping. We have some pasta from Italy, from a country shaped like a boot. We have some bay leaves from Egypt. We have some black peppercorns from Brazil. And some satsumas from Israel. Shall we have a look on the atlas? We're looking at a picture of Italy. And it is shaped like a boot, isn't it? And the capital is Rome. And pizzas come from Italy as well. Even bath time can include a geography lesson. Um, OK, where do we want the pirate to go tonight? Um, so we spin the globe and you can point... Sudan. Sudan. Oh, OK, so to get to the Sudan, the pirate would have to go all the way from England where we live, right? All across France. That's right, down there all down to Italy, right through uh, Egypt. Egypt and into the Sudan. Yeah. And this mother is very the sensitively drawing yes, out her daughter's well, descriptive powers. Yes. What do you think they could be? What are they as ugly as? Ugly as... A pot of mud. <laughs> well, actually, they're mud-coloured, aren't they? Yes, as ugly as mud. That's, that's a good way of describing them, because that tells you about their colour as well, doesn't it? And how ugly they are. The other vital way to build vocabulary is, of course, through reading, and reading a wide variety of books. Which brings us to the next building block, reading. <laughs>